we changed bit by bit. Uh, we took all the things that uh, we felt didn't uh, add value to our lives and we took them away, like for example flying or we live on a very small island so our car didn't add much value and then uh, lots of meat in our food didn't add value so we took it away and we make some meat here with the animals we have on the farm. We want to eat meats that we know how were grown uh, or how the farming uh, went on. Uh, so the pig lives, roams freely with a lot of grass to, uh, to plow with a snout and the sheep live outside uh, because we have chosen a breed that can live outside all year round. Um, and we have ducks roaming freely. When consuming less, we, we do not have to earn uh, a lot of money. So uh, we can spend the time that we would have spent uh, working with our children uh, in our family. And the kids participate when we use our land. So they, they see how we do it. And they, we teach our kids that carrots don't come from the supermarket. Uh, they come from, from the soil. And good carrots come from good soil that has been treated well. Um, and the same with, with animals. If you feed the animals with good foods, then you will have healthier animals and better tasting animals. Um, and if it's good for the animals and the soil, then it's good for us. We feel that what we have done to live more sustainable, sustainable is not a sacrifice. And I don't think that we have to convince people that they have to do exactly what we do. You just have to think about how you can live more sustainable. And do not start out with choosing something that feels like a very big sacrifice. Choose something that doesn't feel like a sacrifice. For example, if you live in a big city and you have a car, it wouldn't feel like a sacrifice to not have a car. Or if you uh, don't find meat important in your everyday meals, you can choose not to eat meat so often. Um, and maybe eat more vegetables instead. Um, but I really, really do not feel that this is a, a life with lots of sacrifices. When you buy groceries in your supermarket, they have been transported. Uh, even if you buy Danish goods in Denmark, they will have, will have been transported from where they were produced to one warehouse and then to another warehouse and then it goes to the shop. If you go buy locally, go to the local farmer and buy your food, then you only transport it from the farmer to you. Uh, and that's if if everyone did that, we could save a lot of CO2 emissions um, compared to how we do things now. Uh, the problem, in my opinion, is that it is some way it is it, somehow it, it turns out to be cheaper to transport things because you can produce them cheaper when you produce them in a large large scale um, but it's not necessarily good for the climate and if and it's not good for the economy either but that's a whole other story <laughs> um, I think less transport is a very big point in sustainable agriculture uh, but but also the way we could the way we could treat our soil to build more organic matter in the soil, if, we, if everyone did that and we increased soil organic matter by just 1% on all agricultural land on the planet, it would have a huge impact on the level of CO2 in our atmosphere. Um, and that's one of the points why I do this. Uh, my whole project in the garden is to build soil organic matter because I can show other people through social media and, and by showing my garden to people that there's another way of growing and we get better food and a better planet.
We are also we are parents, so we we are the one raising the children of the future. So we have a re responsibility both to try to ensure the best possible future for our kids, but also to make our kids people that go out in the world and show uh, other like, people that uh, that sustainability, living more sustainable with less consumption. It's, it's nice and good, and it's not important to wear the newest uh, sweater from uh, a big brand. It's just important to be happy. Yeah.